going to go ahead and declare a, a medical emergency as well. Um, it's actually the, the captain uh, that's not doing well. A southwest flight from Las Vegas to Columbus, Ohio. So we need to get him on the ground uh, immediately. So just, yeah, we are an emergency aircraft at this point. The captain falls ill with stomach pain and faints. He is alert and, and attentive right now, um, but we do have medical personnel on board that say is going to gonna check him out. An off-duty pilot saves the day and lands the plane back in Vegas. From pilots to flight attendants and passengers. Do you have any medical personnel on board? Medical emergencies are on the rise as travel increases and the population ages. The Centers for Disease Control estimates about one in every 600 flights has a medical emergency. Our dispatch should have notified your medical personnel and have the teams rolling. Doctors are warning when the call for help comes down the aisle, they don't always have what they need to help you. 100% of the times that I've asked for those kits, they were either absent or incomplete. Dr. Leo Nasola is talking about emergency medical kits on flights. All airlines are required by the Federal Aviation Administration to carry these bags filled with 25 mandatory items to save your life. The kits include a stethoscope, aspirin, a blood pressure cuff, and epinephrine to treat allergic reactions, but not an EpiPen, in pre-measured doses, which makes the drug easier to inject. There was Obviously, no EpiPen, uh, which is one of the most important items that you should have on, on the plane. Neither the FAA nor Congress has updated what's required inside these kits for nearly two decades. Dr. Nasolas helped in at least five in-flight emergencies. I think those kits are usually outdated, the ones that I've come across and could definitely use some improvement. He's nowhere near alone. Last year, a doctor tweeting to an airline, your medical kits need a glucometer. EpiPen, an automatic blood pressure cuff. It's impossible to hear with a disposable stethoscope in the air. Please improve this for passenger safety. It went viral, and doctors from across the country weighed in. An ER doctor writing, need to add Narcan. Another saying, very few of these supplies would work for small kids or babies. First time I saw this kit, I was astonished that they did not have something as basic as a glucometer which is a blood sugar monitor, because one of the most common things that can happen to someone on a plane or while traveling is their blood sugar gets a little bit too low or maybe gets too high, and that can cause them a lot of issues. And a Dr. Amy Faith Ho works in a Texas ER and has helped with medical emergencies on multiple flights. She says some airlines are going above and beyond to add more items and medications to their kits, just not all of them. In 2020, the FAA issued guidance to airlines encouraging them to include more. It's still not mandatory to add the extra items. Should this be better? Better regulated? Should there be a uniform policy for all airlines and not airlines electing to do things or not do them? But I absolutely think that this needs to be centralized and regulated in one place so that you can know what you might have on any given airline. There's no government agency tracking all in-flight medical emergencies, so we asked the FAA for a list. The agency eventually discovered it does track some of these incidents. So we analyzed what it gave us and found more than 400 medical emergencies on commercial flights in the last five years. Most of those involved injuries to the flight crew, but some of them involved injuries to passengers. We found passengers falling ill having seizures, a passenger with a broken leg from turbulence, a flight attendant inadvertently stuck with an insulin shot while trying to help a passenger with a diabetic issue. People live into their 70s, 80s, 90s, and if you have medical conditions, certainly you shouldn't, shouldn't have to be afraid of flying. Avital O'Glasser has been a doctor for 16 years, and she's helped patients on half a dozen flights. On a recent flight, she needed the kit, and she says it was hands down the best medical kit she's ever seen. In the heat of the moment when you're trying to stabilize a patient at 30,000 feet, like not having to dig through something, um, but having a very clear, organized, this is here, this is there, this is color-coded, these are the doses we have, gave me just so much peace of mind. That kit was made by MedAir. 16 airlines around the world use these kits, but not every U.S. airline. MedAir did not disclose which carriers are involved, but Alaska Airlines and Delta told us they use the kits. <laughs> 
They are filled with more than the FAA requires. For uh, airlines and, and aviation in general, weight and size of every item is, is critical. Dr. Paulo Alves is the company's global medical director. He helps decide the additional items for the Medair kits. He's been involved in 25 in-flight emergencies. Most airlines in this country, what they carry in the kit is actually well beyond the, the minimum requirements prescribed by, by the FAA. He led a 2019 task force created by the FAA to review what new items need to be in these kits. It made several recommendations. The FAA is actually the, the governmental agency responsible for enforcing the medical kits and, and, and controlling uh, uh, the medical kits. But they don't define the content of the medical kit. In a statement, the FAA told us it's reviewing the emergency medical kit requirements based on the input from this task force. Though changing the official list of requirements for these kits means Congress has to act. Until then, some of the emergency medical kits on flights continue to be outdated and inconsistent. If you are a patient and you are traveling, please, please, please make sure that you keep any of your life-saving medications with you. Do not check it. Do not put it in your luggage. Doctors tell us if you are allergic to something, carry your EpiPen. If you are diabetic, have your insulin and glucometer handy. If you're traveling with a sick child or you don't feel well, doctors say consider postponing your trip. And if you are a doctor, make sure you have your credentials accessible. You never know when the shout down the aisle will come. For Investigate TV, I'm Rachel DePampa.